Hello there, Adam Bazalgette, founder of Scratch Golf Academy. Today's subject, golf driving for seniors. I mean, they want the same thing as everybody else. They want reasonably straight shots with distance, but we particularly, and I can put myself there now, lose some distance as we get older. Show you three things I think will really help. Two you've probably heard before, but I'll give you a few fresh ideas on those, I would think. And the third one will probably surprise you. Well, very quickly, if you're new to the channel or if you've watched the videos here before but haven't subscribed, I'd really appreciate it if you would subscribe. We'd love to get you more of the free content, help build the channel. Hit the little subs red subscribe button, but next to it also, the, the bell will allow you to be notified every time we have a new video coming out. So appreciate it if you go ahead and do that. And again, I think this video will be helpful to you, help you gain some distance. So the three things we'll look at with players today, that's Jason Day on the left, young stud hits at a mile, and that's the late great Payne Stewart in a regular pair of golf slacks there on the right. Really good for his longevity. Interesting to see how much smaller the club head is in his case there 20 plus years ago versus Jason Day. But the three things we're going to look at all have to do with the backswing. Now let's look at these two backswings. Uh, definitely a nice backswing. Probably there's the end of it. Let's look at Payne Stewart. Well, the obvious thing is it's a much longer backswing. Now, you know, what are the advantages of a longer backswing? Well, the big advantage, you've got to get to about here with your hands, the ball's up there somewhere to get to the ball. You have much more time to build speed in your downswing. I mean, listen, I can get my car to 80 miles an hour, but not nearly as quickly as a NASCAR can get to 80 miles an hour. So if you're only swinging back to about here and you have that much time, he's got, Jason's got just as much speed as Payne Stewart, probably more, but he's got it with sheer, you know, sheer dynamic energy. Seniors don't have that. So the long backswing gives you time to build speed. And I think it helps build rhythm because I think if you sense subconsciously, yeah, I've got a nice big backswing, plenty of stored energy. I can pace myself and build speed. If that backswing gets too short, the tendency is to really have to jump at it to create the speed. The thing is, though, there's good and bad ways to lengthen it. That's what we're going to explore. Okay, first on our list of making your backswing potentially a little bit longer is your pivot, your body motion there. Now, if you don't have a big, decent sized pivot, you're not gonna make a very big backswing, or if you do, you'll be overdoing it with your arms and cause all sorts of problems. The key is though, you still have to have some sense of balance, and you have to have some sense of torque and wind between the upper body and the lower body. So bear this in mind, your natural subconscious brain, the part that, I'm not a brain expert for sure, but the part that controls these motor programs likes efficiency. So test yourself like this. If you had to reach for something on a high shelf, would you move your legs first? Absolutely not. You'd reach, and as your subconscious mind sensed, okay, we're getting stretched, we're not making it, it would add in a bit of lower body or, or stretch, if you like, that way. It does it in that manner. That's what you need in your golf swing. So play around with it right there at the house. If you're at the house watching this, Hey, if you had to put your hand here, let's say your right-handed goal for your right hand, you don't need really any legs there. If you had to put your right hand and reach up for something behind you more there, you'd start to feel more movement here, but this needs to be reactive to that. Then get a golf club in there and say, hey, listen, without thinking a lot, how far can I go before I need, start to feel I need more movement in here to allow for that stretch? Then you're starting to get the feel. So, one of my swing tendencies, my whole golf life since I was a junior golfer, it's just my nature, or it's just the things I got used to doing is to have a short, stiff backswing. So I'm gonna give it a try here, and we'll see. See if I can allow myself a good stretch and have the patience, if you like, to complete the backswing. Let's have a look here. Well, it wasn't the greatest shot for sure, but I did feel like I made a decent stretch going back, and that would be more the feel I'd be looking for. Okay, next one, you need to have a full wrist cock. That will supply a lot of speed and it lengthens your backswing. And that would be angle between the lead arm and the golf club there. A lot of people get tripped up at their address and make mistakes or make a mistake there that doesn't really allow them to do this. Let's have a look at that. So there's Ricky Fowler, no distance troubles for him. If you wanna hit the ball further, I have a free course for you, free three-part in-depth video course down in the description box, gain 25 yards, just go ahead and pick that up. So as we look at Ricky there, he's doing what you need to do, and that is he's creating a significant angle between his arms and club. Number one, that gives you a good deal of wrist cock before you've even begun your backswing. Number two, though, it is much easier to get your grip correct. Expect the club to point somewhere near your belt buckle as you take your setup. Also expect the toe of the club to sit up in the air a bit. 
So if you're going to have mobility wrist cock, you have to be able to push down on the handle to make it hinge. So get the handle a little bit lower, make sure this pad, this palm is on top of the club and the club's more down in the crevice of the fingers there. Again, you need a pretty significant angle to do that. If you get this wrist up high and get it stiff and get the club too much running up your palm, you will have a very hard time cocking your wrist. So great drill to check your wrist cock. Get your shadow in front of you with or without a ball. You're not always going to be at a sunlight angle that, helps you, that allows you to do this when hitting a ball. Go up there and get a full wrist cock. See what the club looks like. This will vary a little according to the length of your shadow and time of day, but I can see right now a lot of the club shafts sticking out there. If I go up and hit and that doesn't show up so much, I know I've got it wrong. I should see that full length of that club or whatever it looked like in my practice swing. Okay, this third and final one might surprise you, but if you allow your left arm to slightly bend, your lead arm, the right arm for a left-handed golfer, just to give a little bit, it can really relax you a little bit through here and really add a bit of length to your backswing. But there's definitely good and bad ways to do this. Let's check out a couple of pros. So 10 majors in this twosome, that's two for Angel Cabrera, long hitter on the left, and eight for Tom Watson, very long hitter himself on the right. Both great longevity players, Cabrera won his majors late, and Watson, great senior tour player, as well as a great regular tour player. So here we go. Let's have a look. Well, long back swings and certainly a decent amount of bend in that lead arm. Again, you don't have to do that. If you're very flexible, you can keep more X factor, more extension in your left arm and still be fine. But if you, if you get older and you find your back swings really lost at length, this can make a difference. The key is, though, you must keep space between that club shaft and your body. If that thing gets too close to you, your right arm is folded too much. So really, it's where the right arm is, how that's positioned that's the key, not the little bit of fold in the left arm. All right, here's a good way to ensure you're doing it right and doing it with structure. Get something like a ballpoint pen. I have a little mini alignment rod here. Grip it about middle of the object and more towards the fingertips. Make your backswing and point that end away from you, away from the target. Get used to that feeling and get that sense that you'd have if you threw a ball. You wouldn't do that. The key is we don't want to pull the right arm to get this to get soft. We want to set the right arm, cock the wrist. Once you've felt that, then just put your left arm up there and just get a feel for it and practice a little bit till you can get something that's comfortable for your body and you can repeat. Again, it, takes, it doesn't take a year to figure this out. It takes a few minutes in front of a mirror to map some of these things out. Map out the pivot, set the right hand, add as much as necessary, just a teeny little bend in that left arm and just find the sweet spot for your body that helps you add length, but keep some structure. Well, thanks, I hope that's helpful to you. I would really appreciate it if you hit the thumbs up button, the like button if you like the video. It helps me build the channel and helps us get some momentum and get more content towards you. Hope this helps you with golf driving for seniors or for anybody for that matter that needs a little bit more distance. Hope this is helpful to you.